Welcome back to the Automation Podcast. My name is Sean Tierney from the Automation Blog and School. And this week I meet up with Michael Sincrali from Rockwell Automation to learn all about what's new in Factory Talk View Site Edition. But before we jump into the podcast, I do want to thank our sponsor for this episode. Each episode takes about a day for us to produce. And without our sponsors, it wouldn't be possible to bring you a new show every week. So today I would like to thank the Automation School for sponsoring this episode of the Automation Podcast. And with that, let's jump right into the show. Michael, thank you for coming on the Automation Podcast. Really appreciate you coming on the show to tell us all about what's new in Factory Talk View Site Edition, one of my favorite products. I'm an old RS View guy, so, uh, you know, of course, I moved right into Factory Talk View Site Edition. And uh, I'm really excited to have you on to talk about this. Now, before you jump into your presentation, can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Hi, Sean. Thanks for having me. Yep, my name is Mike Sankarali. I've been with Rockwell for 15 years and uh, helped with the Factory Talk View Site Edition product for the last five. So product managing uh, Factory Talk View Site Edition. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. Thanks for coming on. So let me give a quick update to uh, your listeners around Factory Talk View Site Edition. Kind of I want to set a baseline for everyone to provide information around where we're going with USC, but also kind of what we're taking from the market and and building out or, or using to build out Factory Talk VUSC. So VUSC is a member of our operations suite. Uh, we focus on three categories with this visualize, resolve, and extend. So obviously. Uh, in our manufacturing systems, in our customers' manufacturing systems, there's a lot of data flowing around, whether it's coming from a controller, whether it's coming from a database. Uh, there's a lot of data there, and we want to be able to give our customers the tools to visualize that data, provide their operators with useful, uh, context-driven information that helps them make decisions quicker and easier. We also want to give them the tools to resolve any any situations or uh, problems that might be present within their system. So our alarming system gives them parts part of that tool. Uh, we also have, aside from that, factory talk diagnostics, which are now coming from the controller that that also give information to maybe a different. Uh, maybe a different audience, not necessarily the operator, but that maintenance technician that needs to go out and resolve those types of issues. And then we also want to extend that information, not just to the people that are there, the operators that are there on the plant for, floor next to the machines, next to the, the, the system that is running, but also we want to be able to provide that to the other resources within the operation, within the company that need to know what's going on day to day. So your supervisors, your plant managers, all the way up to maybe even the CEO. And we provide tools such as Viewpoint to have a web-based HMI client to extend that content to those types of resources. Uh, the Viewpoint can be exposed outside to that CEO, for instance, who might be sitting at home uh, on their couch and looking at the information from their mobile de mobile device. So a lot of power there. Rockwell Automation definitely focuses on a system-wide integration. We want to help our customers with control, maintenance, and even thin client management. If we focus on control, we want to be able to offer our customers not just the controller, not just the the devices that are running operations, but also the HMI. We want to give them the tools to be able to maintain that system. So once they've gone through the process of developing their application, their control system and their HMI, we want to give them the tools to be able to back that up. And through our Factory Talk Asset Center software, customers are able to back up not only their controllers, but their HMI applications as well, and keep versions of those backups as well. So they're able to do a backup, a backup and compare, generate even reports to see if there are any differences, any unwanted differences even running within the applications 
out on the out on the system. But before we go any further, I want to jump in here and thank our sponsor of this week's show, the AutomationSchool.com. If you or somebody who works for you needs training on PLCs, HMI, or SCADA products like VUSE, please visit us over at theautomationschool.com where you'll find every course comes with lifetime access and support. And with that, let's jump back into the show. And we want to be able to optimize that data that is presented to their operators. So through thin clients, we can do that. Through thin manager, we're able to have a system where maybe the main main resources, the, the main application servers sit in a virtual stack somewhere. And out on the plant floor, you have your thin clients. Delivered the, the content delivered through Thin Manager to those Thin clients, which can be easily swapped out, replaced when necessary. Let's say someone backs into one of those terminals with a forklift, we can within minutes swap out that broken, damaged resource, that uh, that uh, compute resource, and replace it with a new one and have the operator up and running, like I said, within a matter of minutes. And if we just look, take a look at our overall, overall visualization portfolio, uh, USC fits right there in the middle, but uh, we do offer the machine level with Factory Talk View Machine Edition or Studio 5000 View Designer, which runs our Panel View 5000 uh, terminals. View Side Edition really offers that that either standalone application that someone may hook up right to a machine running every every component on that one computer the the data server the hmi server the alarm server all from that one machine or we can get scaled out to having a separate compute resource for each of those having the factory talk directory on its own resource the hmi servers potentially redundant hmi servers each on their own resource as well as the links and the alarm servers, each on their own resource. And then up to 120 clients spread out through the, the large facility, facility uh, all connecting into those resources and displaying the content, the, the data, the displays, and the alarms all coming from that one application. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we have uh, resources to extend the HMI. So, Thin Manager allows us to deliver content out to Thin clients. We have Factory Talk Historian SC as an additional method for historizing data within the Factory Talk application. And then Factory Talk Asset Center, which helps capture a lot of the information, the audit messages from the system, but also helps with uh, application backup and restore and auditing. Now, if we take a look just at Factory Talk View SE, we've done a lot over the past couple of releases to really modernize the tools that are available there for operators, for developers to use. So not just at development time, but we focus also on the operator and the needs that they might have as they're running a, a, a batch or, or running manufacturing there within their system. One of my favorite tools probably is that Trend Pro tool. Uh, you can see a, a highlight of it or, or a slide of it in the upper right. I'll dive into that in a second, but really these tools help our operators look at live data or even historical data and understand what was going on in the system and learn from that so that they can drive continued improvement uh, efficiency and all of that in future uh, operations. My favorite part about that Trend Pro, Pro tool is just that, the capability to bring live data together with historical data, whether it's coming from a data log model or a historian SC database, allows you to also bring in asset center audits and the alarm messages that are being generated with the system. If we dive in here, you really get that operator really gets that holistic view of what's going on in the system so that if a uh, alarm occurs, they're able to see the live data, the historical data that's also occurring around that same time, as well as the audit messages where they might say, see an alarm and be able to see a spike in a 
in a pressure pressure value or a flow value and be able to go into the audit messages, hover over those icons and go in and see which operator, which other operator might have made a change within the system that would have caused that. Really driving um, both the resolution and possibly the correction to those situations down the road. Uh, what I mean by that is it may be an oper another operator or another technician modifying values that they shouldn't have permissions to do. So really driving that, that secure uh, operations environment. You know, I want to just expand on this for the audio audience. Um, just imagine a trend right inside your SCADA platform and you have these different va variables right and they're being trended across the screen and then at the bottom of the trend there's these lines with symbols on them and you may have like a red alarm bell whenever there's an alarm and I think that's so invaluable to not only have the data being trended on the screen but also see where the alarms happened over time so very cool thanks for sharing that that's uh, great Michael Yep, thank you. Some other tools that we've added over the past couple of releases allow operators to have access to SQL data as well as data log information, log view SC data log information in a tabular format. So really what, what operators have been looking for, kind of that Excel view of data, they may go and trend that. And, and before we release this, they would go and trend that information in a trend pro control and then probably right click on that and export it to csv so they, that that they could have both a record and also see how the data is more from the numbers standpoint not just from the way it's trended now with usc we're, we provide the tools to display that information right there within the USC client without having to go through multiple clicks to export that and open it in a in a separate tool. We also provide Recipe Pro Plus, which allows our operators, our developers to design recipes within the system and then and then uh, apply them at runtime. We've enhanced our graphic tools to allow uh, developers to incorporate SVG graphics, scalar vector graphics into their application, really allowing a, a more modern looking, uh, allowing them to develop a more modern looking application, as well as the capability to have .NET graphic objects in there. With this .NET graphic object, we also allow regular .NET controls to be added into a USC application. And this is significant because before, if you had a, a tool that you created, uh, an application that you created in .NET, you would have to convert it over to an act ActiveX to be able to use it within your USC application. Now with this new, contr this new .NET control type, you're able to take that developed .NET control, add it right into USC, and have it even connect into tags. So you can have it connect to your HMI tags, your live data tags, and drive animation or drive functions within that .NET control off of those, those values coming from your control system. So really power, powerful stuff there. And then we've updated our web browser control late, uh, in the recent release to, um, to adopt the Microsoft Edge web browser. There's no changes necessary for developed applications, but this definitely drives a more modern look, uh, the, the capability to pull in more modern websites into your web, I'm sorry, into your HMI applications. Uh, you could view video webcams, you could view manuals, PDFs, uh, web pages right there within your HMI application within your display, giving operators maybe access to other types of tools that they may need. Uh, perhaps it's a a uh, work workflow, a work order that they need access to, some type of machine instruction PDF that they need access to, or maybe they're looking at a webcam that's uh, 
20, 20 yards down the line, looking at the materials that are over over there or the product that is over there. So really, really opening up the capabilities are, that are there within a VUE uh, SC application, within an HMI application. But before we go any further, I do want to thank our sponsor for this week's show, theautomationschool.com. If you're looking for training on PLC, HMI, or SCADA products like VUE SC, check them out. Every course comes with lifetimes access and support, and the courses typically go really deep into the subjects. For instance, with VUSE, they not only teach you how to create a project from scratch and, you know, add factory talk alarm and events and add your own global objects and use Plant PAX, but they actually show you how to deploy the project too and edit it after it's deployed. So again, if you need training on PLCs, HMI, or SCADA products, Please check out our sponsor, theautomationschool.com. And with that, let's get back to the show. We also have done a lot of work over the past couple of years to align to modern standards. Uh, one big piece of this is the, the Rockwell Automation Library of Process Objects. This actually has been worked on for, I'd say, 10 plus years even. But it's a common set of controls that are that Rockwell Automation provides. I'm sorry, it's a common set of library objects that Rockwell Automation provides. It is not only the controller code, the add-on instructions, the tags that you need to put into your controller, but also the faceplates, the HMI objects that you can use on the VUSC side and link those two together, really minimizing the amount of time that engineering has to work on developing screens, developing code in the controller. We can take these standard uh, objects, let's say for a pump, let's say for a motor, we can take these standard objects, put them right into your controller code, put the, the respective faceplates into your VUSE application and link them up within minutes and have uh, content, content driven right there within the display. Another piece that we've done a lot of work around is the ISA 101 dot o one standards uh, for those of you that don't know or, or aren't familiar with isa 101.01 it is a study around uh, how operators react to the way displays are are developed um, the the study concluded or, or or found that those gray neutral colors are more receptive uh, are are more more easier for operators to look at for continued periods of time where having bright colors, flashing objects, images all over the display can cause fatigue. We definitely don't want that in our operators, right? So um, that that is something to be aware of, but we've put together this process HMI style guide document available from our knowledge base that really highlights these different things to be aware of as you're developing your 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 HMI application. Uh, it's not specific to Rockwell. It's really a, a industry driven standard, but uh, definitely some good good information in there. And I would uh, recommend going to look at that. You know, I just want to add to that. I, I think before ISA 101, you know, the thought process was to try to make the SCADA look as fancy and as flashy and as realistic as possible. Um, you know, it wasn't uncommon to try to make the screens look as realistic as the plant and uh, actually do animations and try to give a feeling like, hey, this is a virtual version of your plant. But as you said in this study, it becomes readily apparent that with all that action and all that color, you know, operators can miss, you know, alarms. They can miss important information. So, you know, for the, for the audio audience who's uh, not seeing what we're seeing, I mean, this results in a more like more gray screens with colors having a lot more meaning. If something's changed colors, if something's red, that means you should probably look at it right now because by default, everything kind of just looks very peaceful. And so when you start seeing colors show up on the screen, that typically means, you know, it's there to draw your eyes to it. And that's the way I like to explain it to people. But go ahead, let me turn it back to you, Mike. No, that's a, that's a great point. I think even a part of the study was that there should be there should be the the display should be developed in a way where that operator could walk by the terminal 
10 feet away, maybe 15 feet away, glance mm-hmm. over at the screen and know whether everything is okay or not. And and I think if you have a chance, uh, go take a look at that that ISA 101 standard or, or the HMI style guide document that we've put together because it does highlight a lot of those important considerations to t- take when when developing an application. Nice. The the other piece that uh, we we publish that we offer to our customers is our guidelines for applying factory dog USC and a 21 CFR part 11 required system. So definitely something to be aware of if you have those needs if if you're if you're in one of those industries that require 21 CFR part 11 that information is out there and available uh, so go take a look for, for that. Yeah, there's a lot of little features in the software that you may not know of if you don't look at that. You know, one thing I think I uh, I skipped over on you, and I apologize, was the multi-monitor support. Could you speak to that for a moment? I can. There, So we we expanded on our software, expanded on our client configuration in the last uh, couple of releases here, making it a lot easier for customers that are looking for that multi-monitor framework or multi-monitor configuration duration for their operators, uh, making it easier to set up and configure and deploy one of those to a terminal, to a, to a multi-monitor workspace. Uh, being able to take, being able, excuse me, being able to take the displays from the application and say, I want this specific display to show up on monitor one, this specific one to show up on monitor two, and really be able to drive really how that that behavior happens how that how that client starts up uh when the operator initiates it there's a guideline there's a document out there for that as well providing just the the relevant information for that yeah i think any of us who've tried to position displays based on pixels know man it's a lot easier just say show up on monitor one show up on monitor two because um you know, monitors can get moved and, and the pixel resolutions can change over time, especially when you have an array of monitors. So um, really appreciate that update, Mike. Yeah, and and I even rem- remember back to the to the days where we had customers launching a separate SE client on each monitor, which was oh, yeah. not how you wanted to do things. Launch and, and drag and, and maximize on a different display. So this Mm -hmm. takes all of that manual work, all those clicks out of it, and lets you configure it right there within the SC client configuration file. So all the operator has to do is is double click on it and launch it. If we look at design time productivity, so the tools that we've put into View SC, uh, Studio View SC, over the past couple of releases have also really driven how, how easy, how quick you can take a blank slate application and and return a a completed finished product from it. One of the major ones that we added in 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 version 12 was the adoption of the same environment that we use for Studio 5000 Logix Designer. So if you're a Logix designer or Logix developer and an HMI developer, switching back, flipping back and forth between those two environments, you'll really start to see that those two are are more and more alike. So you have uh, the the tree organizer on the left and then property panels on the right to to be able to get to different controls or or objects or even dive into to the specific items, uh, get to the properties of specific items, really exposing uh, the different different fields, different uh, windows, or, or, or access to the different windows within the development environment. We've also done a lot over the years around uh, just making it easier to develop a, a project, develop an, a display. So global objects help drive uh, the, the development of, or, or the mindset of having one object and being able to reuse it multiple times over the many displays that you have in your application. We also provide tools like find and replace or cross-reference so you can see where you're using tags throughout your application and being able to update tag names from 
from uh, the entire application. Hey, I want to stop the show right here and just remind you that I have a brand new podcast called The Automation Morning Show. Most mornings when I'm not traveling or on vacation, I film a 15 to 30 minute show covering all the news from over 100 automation vendors I check every day. So if you're interested and you want to subscribe to another podcast from me, go look up on your favorite channel, whether it's YouTube or iTunes or wherever, go look up The Automation Morning Show. You'll also find it over at theautomationblog.com and at automate.news. And with that, let's get back into the show. You can test run your, your, we provide the tool, I would say from the beginning, we've provided the tool to test run your display without having to start up a client, without having to, to refresh a client. Uh, you can test run that display and make sure that the values, that the objects are linking up, that the, the, the size of those objects at runtime are what you would expect them to be. Uh, we've also added in in recent releases PowerShell scripting. So if you're it's, if you're familiar with the way VBA worked in Vue 32, and if you're familiar with how it works in Vue SC, it this power the way we've implemented this this PowerShell scripting lines up more to Vue 30 the way Vue 32 ran VBA. So I'll I'll give some more information to the listeners. Uh, with with Vue 32, the VBA was centralized, and that's really what we we strove to accomplish with this uh, PowerShell scripting enhancement. Being able to have scripts run from the server side, being event driven, being launched or, or triggered from a button, or even from a viewpoint client. Being able to trigger that server side and have it go off and do something. Now that could be interactions with a database. With this most recent v13 release, we now have bidirectional interactions from PowerShell, so we can not only pass data to that PowerShell script, but have that PowerShell script write information back into HMI tags. So you could query data for, from a database and have it pushed back into into tags in the control system. You could also have it write data out just to a, a standard file, to an Excel file. You could have it send emails even. Uh, the reason we really chose PowerShell was because not only is there a, a, a great library out there on, on the uh, Microsoft website, but it really covers a lot of the things that our customers have been looking to do. Uh, so while we're working on making those native capabilities within the product, PowerShell does uh, help bridge that gap for the time being. And just to highlight, Vue SE does provide highly available systems. So not only can you have redundant servers, redundant HMI servers, redundant alarm and event servers, redundant data servers within your project, uh, we also provide the, the software redundancy there to provide to offer not not only synchronization but failover for those servers so between the primary and secondary hmi server you can synchronize the hmi tag values now you can synchronize the the displays at development time uh all automatically without having to take any extra extra effort to run a replication replication is still there for the initial uh, initial link up of those primary secondary servers. But a lot of that has been covered now in the background as we've matured the product where we're able to, to add in those capabilities and, and make it a lot easier on the user by taking, and I'll stress that it's really the feedback that we've gotten over the years. Why? Why do I have to do this? Customers asking, why do I have to do this in a redundant system? And us taking that and building it out in the product. One major thing that we released in V13 free of charge was the system status portal. And you see that on the right there. It is a view only website that you can go to 
Uh, it gives you an overview. Once you log in, you select your application. It gives you an overview of the different servers that you have in your application, the HMI, the data, the alarm servers that are there, and their status. If, if they're uh, redundant, you'll see that as well. But there's no interaction here. You're not driving failover. You're not able to restart anything here. We're purely providing a, a visual overview of the, the application so you can look at it perhaps remotely and see that your application is in a healthy or or maybe not unhealthy state and some attention is needed. This is automatic, by the way. That's probably my favorite part about it, that uh, there's nothing to configure on the customer side, on the development side. You log into this web page and you select the application and it automatically populates the tiles with the servers that you have in your application and it returns the state of them. And on the commercial side, we've recently released a, uh, a lower price point secondary server. So if you are looking to do redundancy, the primary server license is still the way it's always been, but there is a new offering, a new new license available if you want to do redundancy nice. for that for that secondary server. Sorry, Sean, go ahead. No, nice. It's good that the, the secondary server, the backup server, there's a lower cost uh, uh, license yep. for that. That's awesome. Yep, makes it definitely makes it easier to uh, to to set up to run a redundant system. Another piece, uh, Premier integration with Logix controllers. Uh, this just goes back to to my initial integration um, slide. You know. We have we have uh, our our controllers, our HMIs. We want our customers to succeed with all of those products coming from Rockwell Automation. So uh, we have optimized communications between the HMI and controller by leveraging Factory Talk links. Uh, we also don't require that our our customers, that our developers set up their own HMI tag databases. There's no need to create a tag for tag in the HMI tag database for every, every single tag in the controller that you want to use. We're able to directly reference those from the screen, from the data log model, wherever you want to use a tag in the application. You don't have to recreate that in an HMI tag database. You're able to, to do that right away. Uh, online offing, offline browsing capabilities. So whether you're connected to real hardware or if you're just sitting in a lab somewhere with only a computer, or maybe you're sitting at the the airport uh, with your laptop and you have some time to time to write some some displays or create some displays within Studio Five Thousand, we can take an offline ACD file link it to the shortcut for that controller, and you can browse to the offline tags without having to have access, without having without having to have a direct connection to, an, to a physical controller. And also on the logic side, they recently added extended tag properties, which are uh, description, min, max values, or even the units that might be associated with that tag. Those can all be developed on the logic side. And to streamline the capabilities on the HMI side, you don't have to recreate those. We can reference those directly, use those within the maybe the minimum and maximum values that you're allowed to enter into a, a numeric input. We can leverage those extended tag properties from the tag in the controller right there in the HMI. HMI without having to do any extra work. So really driving the 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 linkage between the controller and the HMI. And then integrated alarms and diagnostics. And I touched a little bit on on this earlier, but uh, alarms and events have really come a long way. But I think I think when we first released them, they were they were quite uh, they were quite amazing in my eyes. Uh, having the alarms and events running in the controller buffered, if, if there is a disconnect between the HMI and that controller, 
we buffer those alarms and events in the in the controller and when that con when that connection is reestablished that information is pushed up to the HMI so if you're using a a logix controller with the USC you're able to really benefit from that capability there the other piece of it is if you're using other controllers if you're using third party devices we can link up to those as well and bring those into alarms and events uh, into the common alarm and event controls just like the other uh, just like the other alarms coming from the control logics we have the alarm and event windows based server that you can do that that you can use to do that uh, the big recent addition to alarms and events uh, i'll link it to alarms and events is factory talk diagnostics the the automatic diagnostics i'm sorry the automatic diagnostics that are generated by the controller and just like we subscribe to the alarms and events in the controller we can subscribe to automatic diagnostics what these are are notification messages that are generated by the controller about the things the controller knows so in if you think about studio 5000 logix designer you're developing your your project file and linking in io and other modules and your project tree if one of those goes offline how how would your operator know about it how would a technician know about it you'd have to do gsv instructions or or instructions to pull that information about that state of the the remote IO or the, the hardware and push it to a tag, which then gets pushed up to the HMI. Now with the click of a button, with the click, click of a checkbox, we can subscribe to that information that's being monitored and pushed up to the HMI automatically. So if there's a uh, major or minor fault in the controller code, if there's a disconnected IO or that type of scenario, we can show that information in the automatic diagnostics viewer on the HMI side. We've done a lot to simplify user management. We tie into Active Directory. We provide capabilities for role-based security as well as product-specific security. So really being able to specify what an what a user can do from a specific terminal in the application in the in the system and then just to jump back to connectivity to any device uh, looking at the usc we've provided the tools to connect to any any type of controller any type of device that you have in your system so with factory talk links or rs links classic more factory talk links i i would say we've pushed all of all of the efforts into making factory talk links really what you want to use to connect to a rockwell automation device you can even use it to yes you can even use it to connect to a plc5 uh, but that that is the main main data server that we see our customers using for customers that might have a third-party device and i won't name any i i know they're listed or or, or there are pictures of them there on the the screen, but uh, we have Kept Server Enterprise, which can be used, or even OPC. I'm sorry, Factory Talk Links uh, Live Data OPC UA. Uh, there's a connector there that you can use to connect to OPC UA devices. So really, there's there's it's not just that you need to have a Rockwell controller. You can have other controllers and still leverage VSC as your HMI get all the benefits out of the tools that we've we've built out in that platform for you. I just I just wanted to reference the system sizing and reference architectures just to to um, highlight the testing that we do. So with Factory Talk USC, the the limits that we've um, mentioned, the the limits that we've highlighted with our release, our tested limits. Uh, we have many many labs uh, that run app run a factory talk USC application year round, and 
their setup configured with these limits. Uh, I can highlight some of them, the 10 servers of each kind, the 120 clients. We have these systems up and running, monitoring them to make sure that there's no issues there. The other piece of information that I want to share is that we do have architectures ready and available for our customers to use. So if you're looking at setting up a brand new VSC application, whether it's local or, or the largest distributed system that, uh, that we could support, we have architectures out there that we can share with you that we will help work with you on to make sure that you're setting your system up in a way that uh, that guarantees success. Definitely reach out to us if you're in one of those situations. And then just to highlight the reduced total cost of ownership, uh, this goes back to the thin manager comment. So really being able to centralize the architecture, centralize the application servers and deploy the content to thin clients is is really where we see customers gaining a lot of benefit gaining a lot of of reduced over overall cost of ownership i wanted to highlight uh some some hardware additions that we've had so with a recent acquisition uh back in 2020 we acquired osm which has brought a great industrial pc portfolio to us a part of this are those thin clients, but they have regular um, box PCs and panel PCs, touchscreen PCs that you can take and load VSC on. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a thin manager system, but those those thin clients that they uh, offer that are available there are thin manager ready. So definitely giving our customers a way to quickly, easily uh, cover the the hardware piece, the the PC hardware piece of their systems. Yeah, for anybody who's um, who's listening or watching, and you may be here in Thin Manager, Thin Manager. I was I was fortunate enough to take the uh, Thin Manager course prior to Rockwell purchasing them. And yes, you know, with Factory Talk VUSC or any skater really, you can deploy Thin clients or Zero clients without a product like Thin Manager. What Thin Manager is doing is it's really simplifying the process and it's making it like if that product fails, you're gonna replace it. It does so much of the management that you would normally have to do by hand or manually. It takes care of that. It really makes it seamless to be able to swap out a failed a thin, not that your thin clients are gonna fail, but you know, in managing those thin clients. So um, I'm sure, you know, I know Rockwell has many people out there who focus just on thin managers. So if you wanna know more about that, but uh, Rockwell, as you can see on the screen here, also has a great line of panel PCs and, and industrial uh, PCs and whatnot, uh, touch screens, the whole nine yards. So um, in any case, but I did want to throw that out because some people out there may be thinking, what's the difference between a thin client and thin manager? And uh, that's really it. So if you already had somebody managing your thin clients for your facility, you probably wouldn't need thin manager. But if you didn't, you definitely want to take a look at it. And that's my two cents on that, Mike. Let me throw it back to you. Yeah, I would even add to that. We've done a lot of integration work, and I didn't highlight enough of that in in the slides here or or in my discussion here. But we've done a lot of integration work with Thin Manager as well, from the single sign-on, being able to log into a Thin client terminal, and having those credentials automatically passed over to the VSC client, so you don't have to log in twice, mm -hmm. uh, like you might see with other other systems. Uh, we've also done work around activations. So for a view SE client running on a thin client, you need a license still. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to a recent recent enhancement, you needed to still have a a license for each SE client running on that thin client. and and traditional RDS systems will still, need a, a SE client license for each of the SE clients running there. But with that recent enhancement, if you're running multiple SE clients on a single thin client terminal, you only need one SE client license for, for that one thin client terminal. It's, it's uh, a little tough to explain through words. I wish I had a, a picture to show it better, but um, 
if you are a thin manager user to, to the listeners, if you're a thin manager user, or if you're thinking about using thin manager, definitely take a look at that. Um, there are some benefits there. Just bringing in the, the integration work that we've done between Vue SC and thin manager. Nice. Yep. So jumping over to maybe the, the more exciting stuff, uh, factory talk Vue SC version 13, we released in, and I'm just going to jump to the next slide so people can start reading. Uh, if you're if you're looking at the slides, we have a feature summary. We we did a lot of work and released a lot of great features in version 13 that was released in March of 2022. Uh, we have a, our next release coming up, version 14 coming up November of 2023. So just later this year, but we, you can see that we focused on a on a few different areas, data connectivity and presentation, extensibility and scripting improvements, improved application design, improved application maintenance, uh, feedback driven enhancements. I mentioned earlier in the in the talk here that we do listen to our customers. I do spend a lot of time talking with customers and taking their feedback, all the things that they like as well as don't like. and. Uh, and taking those comments and looking at what we can do in the product to make sure that we cover some of those as well. And then just some modernization points as well. I'm not going to run through all this because that would be another hour, but uh, to the listeners, if, you, if you, you are interested in hearing about these, definitely reach out to a local Rockwell sales guy, uh, your distributor, they should be able to highlight these or, or provide this update to you as well. But I'm gonna jump into uh, just some, main points some of the maybe the more exciting features from the release maybe the biggest one on the commercial side is the the work that we did around licensing so we we really made it a lot easier the the license simplification work that we did makes it a lot easier to go through and order vsc for your system without having to think too much about what you need what uh, what licenses you need what um what you might be missing or, or there's no going through and ordering it and then realizing that you missed something that you still need. So just looking at the, the slide here, we have the left side, which is our local applications. The right side is distributed. I'm gonna start just to say that we do have a new station light offering. That is the only one that has a display count uh, license on it or tied to it now. So that one is 25 displays. All of our other, uh, all of our other items, all of our other bundles are unlimited display count. So you can dis you can develop as many displays in your HMI application as you want. Uh, another new thing, new enhancement that we did with View 13, View version 13 was unlimited web clients. So that's that viewpoint piece of it where we are now allowing our customers to create stand up that viewpoint server and have unlimited web clients connecting to it. So from another computer and a browser, you could connect in and look at your HMI application. You can uh, look at that content on your mobile phone, on a tablet, wherever you might wanna look at that, but that is free included now with version 13. If you have, uh, if you're running a previous version, version 11 or 12, we do have patches available for that if you want to make use of that still on the local side uh the the add-on option that we have there obviously is uh studio enterprise factory dog view studio enterprise if you're uh looking to still develop a application on the right side we have small medium large bundles uh the only difference between these are the client counts so 5 10 and 25 clients included with that hmi that unlimited display count hmi server license all packaged together for you if you need additional uh licenses on the the distributed side we have the options for hmi clients or or single hmi clients and uh whether those are full or read only licenses those options are there studio enterprise and it is a little hidden there but i mentioned earlier that redundant hmi server license that we that we re recently released that would be on obviously the distributed side to provide redundancy 
We also added in in V13 a new data grid data source. Uh, so for those that are are uh, aren't caught up with the data grid control, this was something that we introduced in V12. It is around being able to pull in information from a SQL database. So making that SQL database connection and pulling back data from it. Uh, with V13, we added data log models as a source for that. So being able to get that tabular view of, of the data from different repositories, whether it's your data log model or a SQL database, all quickly right there within your SC client, being able to even export, print, uh, sort, filter right there within the client without having to do any design time modifications. We added in an XY plot, really removing the need to, to plot time series data and being able to plot two points against one another. Uh, it, we use the same look and feel, so it's common to Trend Pro, and you have the same sources as well, being able to uh, reference live data, view SE data log models, and historian SE data for that XY plot. I mentioned earlier that native.NET control, this highlights that feature or, or the those of you looking at the slides are able to see the different widgets that are available through the .NET control. So out on the web, there are libraries out there, .NET control libraries. You don't have to de develop your own controls, but you can download, install, and leverage any of, the, any of these within your, within your HMI application to visualize the data that you need provide the controls to to give uh, proper or or even modern displays of the data to your operators. Uh, you can either download, you can either uh, develop your own, but all of that does tie into the control system. So you're able to animate that, uh, drive functionality off of that from your control system tags. We also added in Lynx OPC UA connector capabilities with this most recent release. Uh, the big piece here is alarms and conditions. So uh, similar to the way Control Logics does alarms and events instructions, uh, the ALMA, ALMD instructions, and generates alarms in the controller and pushes them up to the HMI, uh, there are OPC third-party devices that have op that that run the OPC UA standard and have alarms and conditions generated similar to the, to the way we do alarms and events in our controllers we're now able to sub subscribe to those alarms and conditions from an OPC UA device bring them up uh, bring them up into the Factory Talk View SE system into the same common set of controls, the alarms and events controls, and be able to interact with them. So we can we can have operators acknowledge or shelve OPC UA alarms and conditions from the controls that they're used to, and they're able to even look at the history that's being historized with the the rest of the alarms, the rest of the alarms and events from the system. So really bringing bring in the capabilities of of USC of alarms and events and bring able, being able to visualize that type of content even from a third party which i believe is is powerful is and 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 uh really helps customers where they might might be using an OPC UA device that's awesome you know i you know previously you would have to create inside factor talk alarm and events you would have to create a factor talk alarm and event tag based alarm and then mm -hmm. tie it to that third party product. But now if that third party product supports this alarms and conditions, this part of OPC UA, that makes it that makes it awesome. And then you can have it right there with all your logics, alarm and events. So very, very cool. Powerful stuff. We added in the the capability to uh, synchro uh, automatically synchronize the HMI memory tags between active and standby servers. So nice. uh, this is just a, a yeah, this is has been a, a long time coming. Definitely asked for, definitely in the category of uh, feedback-driven enhancement. In 13, we 
provide now this checkbox in the HMI server options to automatically synchronize HMI memory tags, the uh, memory tag values to both active and standby HMI servers. So just to walk through what it looked like before, if you had uh, two servers, if you had an active standby server, that tag one could be, uh, it could have a value of two on the active server, but the standby server could have tag one set to zero. If that's what the initial value was, it could have it set to any other value other than two. If, if it, depending on what the value was the last time that server was active, not necessarily the, the behavior you want if you're failing over to that server. So this is very, very large. Uh, definitely glad we got that into the V13 release because there have been a lot of customers asking for this over the years. Uh, mm -hmm. I will say that it is a checkbox in case customers are used to the way it used to work. Uh, they can go in and uncheck that. But uh, definitely something to go in and check on your system. I believe we don't check that by default if it's an existing project. So something to be aware of, something to go check, but uh, definitely powerful stuff there. Yeah, if any of you listening or watching are using uh, HMI tags, let us know, uh, write us, uh, click on the contact link. Let us know what you're using them for. Typically we use them for uh, flow control or just monitor, you know, keeping track of some internal things inside the HMI project itself. And uh, we're not creating a bunch of HMI tags that, you know, these are memory tags we're using inside the SCADA system for something very specific that we need to do that maybe we couldn't find a feature inside the HMI to do or inside of USC to do. So love to hear your thoughts and feedback on that. Are you guys using HMI tags in fact, took USC and what are you using them for these memory tags? So uh, let me turn it back to you, Mike. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, so I just included this. We have a lot of great useful links here that I wanted to make the audience aware of, um, especially YouTube videos. Every time we create a brand new feature in SE, we'll create a short video to kind of give a tutorial, kind of give an introduction to it. So uh, definitely some useful useful content there for, for customers to look at. And then I mentioned earlier that we have Factory Talk View SC version 14 coming out in November of 2023, later this year. Also happening in November, uh, I wanted to give a plug for Automation Fair. So November 6th through 9th uh, in Boston, Massachusetts, we have automa Automation Fair coming. Version 14 will be on the show floor there, so go check it out. We have a long list of great features I, I would say it's uh it's going to be our greatest release yet but i keep on saying that with every release so i'm just really excited that it's uh we're almost there at the release and excited to share all the features with everyone so come visit us down on the show floor come check out version 14 and and all the great stuff that we've put together for you well i hope you'll let me pick your air at uh automation fair I'm I'm only two and a half hours away, so I'm, that's why I'm going. Yay! It's close by, so um, being in the Berkshires here, so I'm really looking forward to it. And I hope you make a couple minutes for me and my audience, so that we can get the the scoop at uh, Automation Fair, what's new and exciting in View SE version 14. So Absolutely. I'm looking forward to that. Absolutely. And with that, I want to thank everyone for their attention, and uh, definitely reach out if you have any questions, if you have any uh, any opportunities for us to help you with. Thank you for coming on and giving us that update. I really appreciate it. Again, VUSC is one of my favorite products. I've been using it for a long time. We own a copy here. We teach on it. And uh, just really appreciate you coming on the show and giving us that update. Yeah, thanks for having me, Sean. Appreciate it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode. And I want to thank Michael for coming on the show and bringing us up to speed on Factory Talk View SE. I really enjoyed that episode. I'm really looking forward to going to Automation Fair to hear what's new with the latest version, version 14. Now, if you did enjoy this episode, please consider giving us a like and a sub. And if you want to follow me or get in touch, you can do so over at automation.locals.com. You'll also find all of my training courses at this week's sponsor's website, theautomationschool.com. With that, I want to thank you all for watching or listening, and I want to wish you all a very happy, safe, and healthy week. And until next time, my friends, peace.